Hello, everyone. Welcome to From the Bottom Up. I'm here with my special guest, David Hoffmeister, again, for another episode of Taking Things from the Very Specific, What It Is We're Thinking and Believing In, Down into the Depths of Release. So, hi, everybody. Can you see? <laughs> Well, today's theme is going to be defenselessness and heart cracking open because a lot has happened in the last few weeks. And um, yeah, I just wanted to go into that right away, actually. There's a line from The Course in Miracles called that says, defenselessness is all that is required for the truth to dawn upon our minds with certainty. And I just had this experience today when I was doing my meditation that um, Normally when I practice this, I feel fear and actually like something will be stripped away or I'll be attacked and I need to keep up some defenses. But this morning, the lesson I could just feel that identity is all that's being protected, that any thought that was entering in was actually just to keep this identity or a belief that somebody else was alive, you know, is the problem. And that is the defense right there but yeah yeah what I really wanted to talk about was the other night we were watching this movie called the enders game and in that there was a scene where the end of the world just happened and everything got destroyed. Maybe I'd like to play that clip to kind of just start us out here. So if Nicholas, you have that lined up, we can just go for it. First clip. So maybe the setup for this is that Ender has been training for many months now, maybe years, kind of going through the ladder of consciousness to finally accept this final mission. And he's, this is his test to see if he's gonna be able to become the battle commander of the whole army. And if he does, then he will be able to proceed and kind of be the savior of humankind to go and attack this alien species called the Formics, who have attacked Earth many years before, maybe like 40 years before. And this is his final chance to prove himself that he's doing a good job. So here we go. So it's them or us, there was no other way. Yeah, maybe I just have to, I have this big whole thing, like how to go into defenselessness and another clip that I found and looking up faith and people to bring on the show. But I just feel like for myself, I've got to go just to where directly, because I can't, yeah, I can't, I don't have a show. <laughs> yeah, I just want my heart to open up. There's like, something I'm just terrified of right now and I don't, I don't even know what it is, but um, so there's just a prayer to open up. David here and it's around relationships and um, so much for my big plan. <laughs> um, I don't know if you can help me. I'm like really having a hard time finding the words. I don't even I know there's somewhere I need to go, but I can't. I can't get there. Yeah. I think it's <clears throat> it's the way the journey goes where 
you have a willingness for healing and then it almost like it dislodges some darkness and some guilt and the attack thoughts come up and and when you start to go deeper into relationships and and towards love it's just love is so strong but but the ego seems to turn from suspicious to vicious because it's so afraid of of this whole awakening and and it's afraid of disappearing and so it, it throws all these uh, defenses up but i feel like um i think yeah as we go deeper and deeper our perspective goes from more of a, of a smaller like with blinders on to just an experience that there is one who's in charge of everything and that it's it's a huge plan it's very expansive but it's almost like uh, jesus is like the conductor and you've got this huge philharmonic orchestra and he's got his baton out and he's just calling forth some for some movements and some others and he's said some are to quiet down and some are to come forward and um it's so vast it's so far beyond all of our definitions and our um our ideas and concepts of relationships that they're just getting overthrown uh it seems and then, then overthrown again and overthrown again you know having us learn that we can't really define god we can't really define love and and in the end we have to even be shown and it has to be revealed to us what relationship is because we get glimmers of that the warmth that love that connection and yet this ego tries to come down and hammer on top of that with all kinds of rules and regulations and do's and don'ts and you know it tries to protect uh this like make believe a uh, world that it has invented and really it's being that world is being washed and rinsed and undone every second and it's it's quite intense when you're when you're going through it because the mind sometimes wants to grab on to something and say what what is this about and i know you were wanting to get into the idea of faith it's really it's not really a blind faith but it is a faith that we that doesn't really involve the five senses you know you can't really rely on the evidence through the five senses uh, to take you through navigate in this awakening so it's it's a, it's a deep faith yeah because what happened was i watched that scene and i just felt all this devastation after and and i'd been feeling this wall like I, i've been very clear and fully in function and i didn't know how else to even go deeper because you know supreme joy wasn't there and i just had this kind of a breakdown with everybody in the house and Dave was, yeah, it's faith will pull you through or someone will show up or, or a, a project. And I've just been part of this whole new direction. We're calling it where all these millennials are coming together and we're just inspired to work on things. And I'd actually lost the new vision. Suzanne and I had been really into it. And then we went up to strawberry and it disappeared. And then one night I woke up with Andy both at midnight and we heard God waking us up to go into the kitchen. And we got there wondering what he wanted us to do. And then Lilo came down. She's a new, some of you might have met her at Strawberry, a new friend in the awakening with us. And all of a sudden, when the three of us were joined, it was like it just kind of came in. And all of a sudden, I could feel my heart just go like, oh, okay, there's the new vision. And, you know, here we go. But it just seemed to get deeper and and deeper. And... Yeah, the the question that's arising as I as I keep going with this is what you know, how specific does it need to be? What if it is just for the project? What if this love is just for us all to really, you know, get into the new direction? But I went up and had a, a talk with Emily yesterday just to share the connection I was having with Lilo and Andy and and mostly Lilo every time I was around her, just something would happen where I would just expand and I didn't know if it was so it was the project that it's just okay. I mean, it feels like so. Yeah. Like, is it, the, is it for the project or is it something deeper around relationship shifts or because it was just getting so intense and 
there was a part of my mind that was wondering if I was attributing it to the form or just a sign that, no, this is really so, you know, for the whole universe. And so once I shared it all with Emily, I just, okay, great, I'm released. Now I don't have to, it's all under Jesus's control now, you know, he can, he can take it from here. I don't have to figure out anything, but if it comes back again, then I'll know that it means something. And so now I'm like, I can feel like, don't come back again because I don't, I don't want to go there into what instability will happen. And already I'm getting witnesses in the community that are like, oh my God, if that means there's a shift, I'm going to shake. And so I'm trying to like manage it. And I feel like my heart right now is reflecting that. It's like, it's closing down. And I don't know how to keep it open without causing a lot of pain. <laughs> yeah. I think when we talk about the new vibe, if you bring it into that newness and that extreme newness, and if you keep bringing it in more and more and more and more to that, then it's taking you into the holy instant. You might think of the holy instant as like this vortex in which everything you've ever known and everything you've ever associated with is just swallowed up almost like in a portal of light. And, and it's so strong. And so, yeah, the fear is, of, there's a fear of sometimes sacrifice, a fear of loss, a fear of hurting someone, someone, oh my gosh, if I let go into this fast love, someone's going to get hurt. And yet it's this brand newness. It's this um, glorious experience that feels so strong in the heart and so vast. And yet um, somebody recently was talking about uh, this guy setting the world record for riding a, a wave over off of Portugal. And it was, it was a 90 foot wave. Can you imagine even climbing and getting on top of a 90 foot wave, what the, what the human structure would be uh, with that. And yet, um, and having to just have total faith to go up, 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 even to get on top of that thing. But it, I think when we go on the spiritual journey, that's kind of the feeling we have. Like many times you get this experience like, oh, I am way out of my comfort zone. I am way out of the familiar. I am, I am, have absolutely no control over uh, where this is, is headed <laughs> spiritually in my mind into an experience. And so I think that's, you've picked a big topic to explore today because um, really the spiritual journey isn't just rehashed memories or the same old, same old, you know, now with a new configuration and, you know, how the world always says, oh, it's brand new and there's nothing really new under the sun on earth. It's just, that when we really let go, it's it's uh, it's a bit scary from the perspective of the ego, just because it's it feels like a huge let go, like it's really letting go with this whole thing. So I think that was your prayer, though. Your prayer was to come back into that new new vibe, that new experience of being in it, being right in the middle of it, being guided, being led, uh, and. To me, that's, it's not like there is no leader, it's really the spirit. And Jesus is, is in charge in front of everything. and He's conducting everything just so the mind can go fully into this experience. But it seems to require a let go, a huge let go. That's the scary part. Yeah, it was fine. It was like really happy and joyful. And I just shared the thoughts thinking, okay, it's, it's abstract. It's just about thoughts or whatever and Emily was like why are you so happy and I'm like I thought it was just because okay you know I'm not mm -hmm. thinking about anything but now it just feels like something's closing and I don't know how to keep it open I don't want to make a mistake just by forcing the form but like why yeah like when you said, said faith you know why I had this feeling like faith is that God will come as an experience, you know, and it's deepening. And and yet I looked up the word faith in the course and some of the quotes that I found were like, if I could read a couple mm -hmm. of them were like, um, 
<laughs> I'm so disappointed. <laughs> okay, put all your faith in the love of God within you. This is the answer to all problems that confront you. Do not put your faith in illusions. Not one illusion is a court of faith. So faith is different. Okay, so every quote I looked up, he was like, just don't put your faith in illusions. It wasn't like faith and then an experience would come. It was always like, just don't put your faith. And so it requires faith that something's going to come if you don't put your faith in these other illusions, right? And is it not faith that God will save me from outside me? Like I was putting this quote, like, is it just going to be an experience or another specific that comes to help me in the direction? But something in my mind still hates that idea that I need a specific. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe you can make something out of this. Well, you know, the thing I liked about reading about faith in the Course is that Jesus, uh, he always has a, a juxtaposition of something to help you get it. And he was saying, it's, faith is really not a matter of degree. It's not a matter of quantity. You know, so that would mean all this idea of having more faith or less faith isn't really, the, he would say, you, you always have faith. And you always have belief, but it's like, what is your faith or your belief in? So he calls the ego, faith in the ego, he calls faithlessness. And then faith in the Holy Spirit, he calls faith. So what I see is the Course is really just helping us remove the obstacles to all the awareness of love's presence. So it's just, it's constantly exposing faithlessness. And when we put our faith in all those things he mentions in lesson 50, you know, pills, money, protective clothing, being liked, knowing the right people, all the things that, that were, the huge amount of time, energy, effort, money are spent on, on the means of separation, which is faithlessness. And that's just exposing that. And then, I mean, even when you get down to the core of it, when, you start to look at, at faith even in interpersonal relationships. Like, you know, it takes faith maybe to marry somebody or to commit to somebody till death do we part or whatever. But even that construct of interpersonal relationships, it, it goes, truth goes beyond those. Truth can't be contained or found even in those. Like Jesus says, the, the temple of the Holy Spirit is not a body. So he's correcting that from the Bible. The temple the Holy Spirit is your relationship. And he's really meaning the temple of the Holy Spirit is your, the way that you relate to all your brothers and sisters, the attitude, your state of mind. That's the temple of the Holy Spirit. And that's what we're going for. We're going for a goal that doesn't have a specific form in terms of how it looks. You can't ever look out on the world and go, ah, oh, that form, that's it. Finally, my faith is fulfilled. It's mm -hmm. never going to come about through a specific form, but the Spirit will use the specific forms, like the conductor in the orchestra, to take the mind higher and higher and lift, to be lifted up beyond all these uh, form outcomes. And so to me, that's, that's, that's what it means to have faith in the truest sense, is to be lifted up. And it's scary if all you know is the form outcomes, because there's a feeling like, like there could be a loss or somebody could be hurt or whatever. We have to start to realize that's impossible. It can't be that opening up to God's will really involves hurt in any way. Because yeah, I was really noticing this morning, or even when I was trying to describe my experience, which was very abstract in the beginning, I would try to tell Francis or Lisa or you or Emily or Lilo, I'm, I was like, yeah, it's the heart opening up. And then very quickly it would be like, but you know, it's, it's just abstract. I don't know where this is going. I don't know. But it's like, I feel like today it's just, it's like some kind of defense or it's just, it's like a lie of getting in touch with like an excitement, mm -hmm. but I'm afraid of the excitement because ego gets excited. Mm -hmm. And yet, there's an excitement foremost, and this is honest, that my heart has to open, you know? Yeah. But I don't know, I'm just in this moment, I'm so afraid that it means something specific, and I don't know. I don't know why I didn't even feel this till this moment. Yeah, like, yeah. But this is beautiful, because this is, 
I mean, it, it seems to be a cracking open and a falling away. So you can't you can't plan for that. You you had your show all planned out today. I think we we met briefly before the show and the iPad and really had it laid out today. It was like uh, the last step. The more that uh, Jeffrey tries to plan it with Frank, the worse it goes. And the more that, that they just show up with no clue, the better it goes. It's the most glorious thing. Because we're being, we're being done through in the most glorious way. The Spirit's right there with us every moment, every step. And, and basically the Spirit's just saying to us, just hide nothing from me. That's why I think it's so important when you have a tension going on in your mind that you can't just go along with a prearranged script. You know, you, you have to break, break out of the script. You know, we've seen many movies where the main character just, just breaks out of the script and says, I can't do this. You know, remember Brother, Son, Sister Moon when St. Francis is supposed to read mm -hmm. in, in Latin this whole, you know, petition and gratitude right, to right. the Pope and this everyone. This is what it feels like. And he it's just, exactly what it he, feels just like. he just drops the whole thing. <laughs> I can't, you know, I can't just, and then he just drops the whole script and he goes, why, why, you know, his, he started, look at the, the birds, you know, he starts, he starts, and Jesus starts channeling through him about, look at the birds and uh, they have only a, a berry and a drop of water, you know, why, he's like, why, why to the whole human condition? And, you know, that's one of the 